Okay, we've got another paired passage. Let's read what we have to answer. Based on the text, how would the researchers in text two most likely respond to the underlined portion of text one? Okay, let's read that underlined portion. Fossils of the hominin Australopithecus africanus have been found in the Sturkfontein caves of South Africa. But, and here's the underlined portion, assigning an age to the fossils is challenging because of the unreliability of dating methods in this context. Okay, so we have unreliable dating methods in these caves in South Africa. The geology of Sturkfontein has caused soil layers from different periods to mix. Okay, that's reason one. Soil mixes, impeding stratigraphic dating, and dates cannot be reliably imputed from those of nearby animal bones since the bones may have been relocated by flooding. That's problem two. Okay, so there's some problems dating these particular bones or fossils. Let's see text number two. Archaeologists use new cosmogenic nuclei dating techniques to reevaluate the ages of A. Africanus fossils, the ones in text one in these Sturkfontein caves. This technique involves analyzing the cosmogenic nucleotides in the breccia, the matrix of rock fragments immediately surrounding the fossils. The researchers assert that this approach avoids the potential for misdating associated with assigning ages based on soil layers or animal bones. So the two weaknesses above are overcome by this new nuclide dating form. So how would two respond to text one? That we basically have a solution that solves your problems, more or less. Let's check the answers. A, they would emphasize the fact that A. Africanus fossils found in stir coved in caves may have been corrupted in some other ways. Corrupted in other ways? No, that's not what they had to add. They had a new method that overcame the historical shortcomings, so that's not right. B, they would contend that if analyses of surrounding layers and bones in the Sturkfontein caves were combined, then the dating of the fossils, no. Not if you took the two problematic methods, put them together, you'd get a good method. That's just wrong, okay? C, they would argue that their techniques are better suited, so their techniques refers to our new cosmogenic nuclei dating. That is the new technique, and it is better suited than the other methods to the unique challenges posed by the Sturkfontein caves. So those caves, you can't use nearby bones, you can't use soil layers and samples, but this new nuclide dating method does work. So it is better suited than the other unique than the other methods due to those unique challenges in text one. That's what they would say. Let's just check D. They would claim that cosmogenic nuclide dating is reliable in the context of the Sturkfontein caves. Okay, they say it's better. I'm not sure that they say it's reliable, right? It avoids the potential for misdating. Uh, it doesn't say reliable though, so that's not quite right in the context of the case because it is applied to the fossils directly. It is not applied to the fossils directly. That is incorrect, right? It's applied to the immediately surrounding fragments in the matrix of rock. There. That is not directly, so that is incorrect. C is the correct answer. Okay, we have another paired passage here. What do we need to find? How would the author of text one most likely respond to the discussion in text two? So what would this guy say about this conversation down here? Let's start by reading text one. Films and television shows commonly include a long list of credits naming the people involved in a production. Credit sequences may not be exciting, but they generally ensure that everyone's contributions are duly acknowledged. So yeah, you ever seen the, the credits at the end of a movie? They just go on and on and on. Well, it's listing everybody who worked on that project, okay? Because they are highly standardized, film and television credits are also valuable to anyone researching the careers of pioneering cast and crew members who worked on in the mediums, okay? So it allows everyone to be accounted for more or less, and it's fairly standardized, I guess, okay? So text two, video game scholars face a major challenge in the industry's failure to consistently credit the artists, designers, and other contributors involved in making video games. So video games, unlike a movie, don't have long scrolling credits. In other words, we don't know necessarily who worked on it as a result. Without a reliable record of which these people worked on which games, 
So without that record, questions about the median's development can be difficult to answer, and the accomplishments of all but its best known innovators can be difficult to trace. So in short, uh, two says video games don't have the same credits, therefore they don't have the same sort of history of who worked on what. So how would the author of text one respond to text two? Let's look at the different answer choices. A, by recommending that the scholars mentioned in text two consider employing the methods regularly used by film and television. No. So notice this might be tempting because it looks like the credits are useful from text one, but would text one say, hey, text two, you need to use this method of credits. So that's not it. And by the way, it's not the scholars that would use it anyway. So that's not the right object of the actual recommendation here, right? Employing that methods regularly used by film. There's nowhere it says you should do this. It does say the credits work very well for film. They don't have an equivalent set of credits for video games, so it's harder to trace. That is not, by the way, assuming that they're recommending anything, that they do something. So be careful about that. That might trap a lot of students into uh, an appealing, what seems to be an appealing answer. That is not correct. Text one is not recommending that video game scholars or video games use the credits. B, by pointing out the credits have different intended purpose in film and television, no. We don't discuss the different purposes. The purpose seems to be consistent, you know, allowing people who's work, who have worked on the project to have that you know, recorded. C, by suggesting the scholars mentioned in text two rely more heavily on credits as a source of information than on film, no. Video games rely more on the credits than film or television. That's never mentioned. That's no reason to say that's true and correct. D, by observing that a widespread practice in film and television, yes, that's credits, largely prevents the kind of problem faced by the scholars mentioned in text two. Yes, text two, the problem is video game producers, whoever worked on those projects, don't get credit. That's the problem. No credit. Now, by observing that widespread practice of using credits as we do in film and television, we could avoid that problem of no credits. They're not recommending it. They're not saying they should do that. They're just observing that a widespread practice like that from film and television would prevent the problem in text two that video game contributors don't get credit for their work properly. D is the correct answer. Don't get caught for an answer like A. There's no recommendation of what to do in here. D is the better answer. Number eight. Based on the texts, how would Hull's team, text two, most likely respond to the argument in the underlying portion of text one? So how would this guy respond to the underlying portion there? Well, let's take a look. Let's see what text one in the underlying portion is saying. The Cretaceous Paleogene KPG mass extinction event is usually attributed solely to an asteroid impact near Chicxulub, Mexico. So this is the death of the dinosaurs scenario, right? It doesn't say that, but that's basically what it is, right? You know, asteroid comes in, uh, kills dinosaur, right? So it comes racing in, okay? That's the reason for the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million plus years ago, right? So we kind of know this event. They don't give us all those details, but one can surmise that that's what it is. So some scientists argue that volcanic activity was the true cause, not an asteroid. Okay. So some are arguing the underlying portion. Hey, wait a second. This is not the case. It wasn't an asteroid. It was a volcano that exploded everywhere. Okay. That's the underlined assessment. And it occurred relatively early in a long period of eruption of the Deccan Traps range that initially produced huge amounts of climate altering gas. Okay, so we could trace it to that as opposed to an asteroid. These dissenters note that other mass extinction events have coincided with large volcanic eruptions. Well, only the KPG event lines up with an asteroid strike. Okay, so most extinctions were due to volcanoes there not necessarily to asteroid strikes. In fact, this is the only one that lined up with an asteroid strike, okay? Text two. In 2020, Prince Hull and her colleagues analyzed ocean core samples and modeled climate changes around the KPG event. The team concluded that Deccan trap gases 
did affect global conditions prior to the event, but that climate returned to normal well before the extinctions began. That means the Deccan trap gases did not cause the extinction event. This says the volcano scenario, not the cause. That instead, they closely align with the Chicxulub impact, that is the extinction, the KPG event. So the text two is saying, hey, wait a second. No, this is not the volcanoes. Those volcanoes returned normal before the KPG event. What lines up appropriately is the asteroid explanation. So two says basically one is not correct. Okay, let's check answer A. By agreeing that the Chicxulub impact changed the climate and that the Deccan Traps eruption caused the KPG event. No, that's not true, okay? By the way, they're not agreeing. Text two is not agreeing with text one. They're disagreeing, so that's wrong, okay? By declaring that the changes in climate caused by the Deccan Traps eruptions weren't the main cause of the KPG event. Yes, they're definitely pointing out that it wasn't the main cause of the KPG event. In fact, it was probably the Chicxulub impact, the asteroid impact. So this looks like it could be good. Let's just check the other answers. C, by questioning why those scientists assume that the Chicxulub impact caused the Deccan Traps eruption. By questioning why those scientists assume Chicxulub. Why did they assume Chicxulub, which is the asteroid? Well, because the timing was the same. That's not what text two would do. Question, text two agrees that it's Chicxulub. They wouldn't question scientists who said the timing's correct. Incorrect. Okay. D, by asserting that the Deccan Traps eruption had a more significant effect on global conditions than those scientists claim. Well, there's no comparison to what those scientists, whoever they are, claim. And this is not what they say, right? Text two does not say that Deccan Traps was more significant. That's incorrect. Text two says Deccan Trap was long past having an effect. It returned to normal by the time the KPG event occurred, the extinction occurred. That's not right. The correct answer is going to be B. By declaring that the changes in climate caused by the Deccan Traps weren't the main cause of the KPG event. They had already returned to normal before the extinctions began. And then the Chicxulub impact, the asteroid, coincided with the KPG event. That's the better explainer, B.